You ready for this? After working our way deeper and deeper into the Alaskan bush, we finally arrived at Roosevelt Lake, in spite of the rain and the mud. There were just a few problems at this point. One, we couldn't drive to the edge of the lake because the trail was becoming way too muddy. Two, the ground was so saturated that when we attempted to back the trailer onto a patch of grass to set up camp, it sunk. And three, we just slipped and slided our way down a moderate hill that I was having doubts about ascending with the trailer in tow. Not to mention the rain wasn't letting up like the forecast predicted, and we didn't want to risk being stuck down in the marshy areas for what could turn into days. After a bit of pondering and sloshing about in the muck, we decided we had seen enough of this particular trail and began to try an ascent back up the slick hill. It became apparent the momentum was going to be our friend on this slippery hill, so we disengaged traction control to reduce power loss and allow tire spin, which helps clean out the sticky mud from the treads. crazy probably not the smartest thing I've ever done but I was hoping for epic lake views epic lake view but eight inch deep mud once we got down there so with the rain coming down harder and harder we decided bail out and sometimes your biggest friend is momentum and we just carried a lot of it I can't believe the trailer is still upright I really wish we had the put the What's the GoPro? Little, yeah. Well, let's turn around and go put that back on. I don't think so. <laughs> Yeah. 
I can be a man, be big and tough for you, darling. That won't be enough. I would learn to move mountains, now I learn to part the sea. Whatever you want, whatever you need, you're the light in the tunnel when I'm feeling gray. You're the sun peeking through on that cold winter day. And if I could change a thing, you know, nothing would be changed. Cause I love you so, and I'm glad you came. So, we wanted to make a trip up to the old town or mining claim of Denali which was it started in like 1903 and uh, was actually active until 1995 and so we made our way up there and it was beautiful just beautiful and there's actually a lot of other active mines up there just much smaller scale and uh, we were really hoping to get up there and camp on Roosevelt Lake because we heard there's really good fishing in Roosevelt Lake and uh, <laughs> we ran into a an old miner on the way out and he he pulls up and just looks at me and I'm like how's it going and he just looks at me and finally he asked me how I'm doing and you know we had this conversation I said hey we're going down to Roosevelt Lake and uh, we'll open and stay down there and he says you're not gonna go down to Roosevelt Lake well long story short we went to Roosevelt Lake but the rain kept coming and kept coming and we made some pretty significant water crossings uh, we crossed the river multiple times and not not any of them were super bad but with the way the rain is continuing to come down like right now harder and harder we decided you know what it is just not worth the risk even though it might be a beautiful place to camp there and then maybe be stuck for a few days um, maybe even a week or so because um, the weather forecast, number one, hasn't been all that accurate in Alaska. Um, and number two, it's been raining just more often than not. So we're taking the safe route. We're going to get out of here. It's already 10 o'clock tonight. Um, but we're just going to just gonna bite the bullet, get back to the Denali Highway, and camp in a little bit more friendly situation. So... That's kind of a bummer. It was so gorgeous back there. Maybe one day we'll return and, and show you guys it in the sunshine. But, uh, you know, you gotta do what you gotta do. It was beautiful with all the clouds and, and rain. So we got to see it in a certain light. And we'll just take the positive and, and rock on. So, y'all have a good night. We're gonna find camp, get set up. I got dirt on my hands But I'll take care of you Better than any other man I'll hold
hold you until we all go. As you, my sweet, oh, you save my soul. Good morning. Hang on, there's a car coming. Good morning. Or maybe I should say afternoon. We got kind of a slow start this morning. Uh, the rain kept coming and kept coming and it did not stop until probably about 9.30 this morning. And then the sun came out. We had a few minutes of just this glorious sunshine and uh, we were able to dry the tent out for the first time in a few days. And now we've just kind of pulled over here to the side of the road, got down out of the wind, had us an amazing breakfast. Um, I'm a sucker for steak. I know it looks like I eat steak all the time, but it's such an awesome meal to prepare on video. You've seen every steak I've eaten in the past five months, so that's that's it's, it's a rare occasion. But when we do get the chance, we just eat it up. Today, the agenda is find camp. Um, ideally, I would like to go and find a place with a lake. I'm really looking forward to getting some fishing in. Um, so we'll see if there's something to, to hit on the way out. We have about 48 miles before the end of the Denali Highway and then we're going to work our way up to Denali National Park from there. But looking for one more awesome place to camp. So you can see we got you know a glacier back here in the background. It's just incredible. I really wish that the cloud cover would lift a little bit more because there's even bigger mountains behind that. But you know this has been an awesome trip. The mosquitoes there are none uh, they've kind of cleared out we've not had any big mosquito issues the whole time we've been in Alaska to be honest with you so uh, it's been a blessing to have that relief as well but uh, yeah Denali Highway you got to do it it's it's awesome it's an easy run plenty of camping camping everywhere so if you're in Alaska check out the Denali Highway Stand up tall I hold myself higher than There are the ones that tend to fall But I'm here still Now I'm here still Don't stop moving don't stop moving Don't stop moving Don't stop moving Keep your demons at bay when you move your feet And I won't forget you and you don't forget me So good. Oh, darling, it's all right to cry. Just like you, they don't know. Watch your step and close your eyes. Creatures come and creatures go. Don't stop 
A grayling. Arctic grayling. Here he goes. He catch Arctic! <laughs> That's the biggest one yet. Woo! Look at him. That is a big boy. I can... Nice. Oh! Nice one! Yeah, yeah, yeah. Look at you tearing them up. That's a pretty one. That is a pretty one. Whoa! <laughs> He's coming back to visit. There he goes. <laughs> what is that, nine? I think so. Nine and 30, 40 minutes. What is this exactly? Uh, beef and vegetable soup. Nice. Alright, so we are set up. We are at Brush Cannon Campground. This is a BLM campground. The beauty of the BLM campgrounds is that our America the Beautiful Pass for all the national parks count towards half off. So it's like five or six bucks for us. It's not bad at all. but. Pretty nice spot right here by the river. So if you can see, we've got the darchi all deployed out. We've got our little bug hut over here. Not for the bugs, but because it was so wet, it just needed a chance to get some fresh wetness. I mean, it's not that's going to dry out. But check this spot out. I think this is like an old prospector's cabin. And this awesome, awesome creek. Or river, I should say. I caught 13 grayling right down there. All in the course of about 45 minutes. I'm hooked. No pun intended. Oh yeah, we found new sailors. They were just laying right here when we came in, so those might get zip tied to the front of the Forerunner somehow. I think tomorrow we'll end up completing the Denali Highway and work our way over to Denali National Park for a little change of pace. Now, I'm gonna get me some of this beef stew. I'm gonna sit by that fire right in there. You see it? Her legs in the way. And then call it a night. It's been a good day. Have a good day.
man. Wild caught Alaskan blueberry pancakes. Wild caught, yeah. So good. They like turn the blueberries to candy. They're like, it's just, it's unreal. Yeah. So good. Yes, boss. How much work do you think? Um, a couple months, maybe. She smiled. You wish to open school when, Pam? In a few days, if I can. Well then, you will do it in a few days, Fred. Wild no? blueberries. I think the wild blueberries sound like a winner. What are you starting with? Got a little bit of PB and J. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Mm. Have a mama. Peanut butter and jelly. PB and J. Yeah. Mm. That's why I don't have cookies, because it's basically a dessert. <laughs> <laughs> So this is just to give you a taste of what we do on down days or rainy days like what we have right now. We're kind of holed up here in the 230 Sydney. Got some video editing going on and um, quick little bite of break, uh, uh, quick little bite of lunch. And I know we're in bear country and you're not technically supposed to eat in your tent, but if you notice we have a blanket. That's to catch the crumbs. We eat, we throw the crumbs out. And hopefully a bear doesn't come Perfect while we're eating at lunch. Yeah, but he's gonna climb up here first. We'll hear him coming. I found the grower chip. Oh, I saw that. <laughs> Get your sandwich first. But I also want to clarify that this is primarily what we eat. Even though you see a lot of cool footage of steak and delicious stuff that Sarah cooks, obviously that gets expensive. So that only happens ever so often. This, this is pretty much what we eat. It is still good. I love it. I love it. All right, let's eat and get back to work. After a day in the tent of video editing and trail school for Caroline, it was time to catch us a truly wild-caught Alaskan dinner. So we geared up for the rain, grabbed our rod and reels, and set out to bring home a few Arctic grayling.
Alright, we've got our arctic grayling all filleted up. That's a tough fish to fillet, although it has been quite some time since I've done one. Um, there's like a secondary line of ribs in there, so I'm not sure if I really went about this the right way. Maybe do a little research next time we get some signal just to see how people typically prepare them, but hey, meat's meat. We're going to figure it out. It looks good. Oh, baby. <laughs> Good stuff. Yeah. <laughs> tell us tell us about your chicken now. Um, um the chicken my favorite part of salad is the crispy. The crispy? The crispy. Yeah. <laughs> Good morning. It is still. Good morning. Again. Battery died. Sorry about that. It is still raining. There's nothing worse than packing up camp, a wet camp, and then having to do it in the rain. But that has become our MO here in Alaska. So we're going to put our big britches on. Get a little bit of breakfast, lots of hot coffee, and we'll be wrapping up the Denali Highway today, making our way to Denali National Park. It's been an awesome ride. It's been relaxing here by the river for a couple days. I'm a sucker for that sound of the river. Just listen to that. What a wet, nasty day. It's been raining nonstop for two days now. We had no choice but to just move on. I mean, I was hoping that we'd get some sunshine and maybe dry things out just a little bit, but not happening. So we're gonna work our way down towards Denali National Park, set back up again, maybe spend a couple days there, hoping for some sunshine just to help us dry out. I gotta give 230 some credit though. We've not had a single leak in that tent, and there's been some times where it was just raining cats and dogs, so very, very, very impressed with that but you know you still have condensation anytime you have 98 99 percent humidity and you put warm bodies inside an enclosed area you're going to have you know condensation on the walls and stuff like that so um, a little trick that we use is we actually pull our blankets out usually we leave everything in there but we pull our blankets out so that when it all collapses down on itself it's not being absorbed into the blankets because you know moisture wants to track to the dry areas um, so if you ever get in a situation like that, you can pull your blankets out and it makes a big difference when you go to pop up the tent later on. So, uh, yeah, that's what we're doing now. Just trying to dry out a little bit. I got the heater cranked and hopefully we'll get, uh, get our bodies and feet dried out here in a little bit and go find us a camp spot. <laughs> 